Hi, my name is Ion. Welcome back to Berlin LibreFlip. This is episode 28 of this series where I'm building this page-turning open source book scanner. And today is about the light and it's also about replacing a part that broke before I could actually use it. You might remember in one of the last episodes I installed this part in the top up here. And um, this part I have to replace now because it broke. I tweeted about that with a short video clip, but I, but it broke off camera. I redesigned the part because that part, the, the bit that broke off, the pulley here, was basically attached by just one or two layers down here. And that wasn't good, that broke. And this is, this is the new version of the part. And this new version has actually four, um, four screw holes around the pulley holder. And these screw holes have, um, like mount the part to the back wall. But the main function of them is to compress the layers together so it can't break along the layer lines. And with these four bolts around the central thing, I think this is sturdy enough and it won't break again. The other thing I want to do today is to mount the lights, as I promised in episode 27. Uh, the lights go on top of here and are made from LEDs with a very high color reproduction index, which is a value that explains or that compares how well the light reproduces color for a camera. Initially, I didn't plan the lights. I thought, okay, I can... I need to get the page turning going and the image capturing and that's the central thing I can plan the light later. And so I built and built and built and built. And at some point I had the bullshit idea to put an, uh, an aesthetic light on top of here, which is why I put this glass in here. Um, this idea is actually not a good idea, so I won't do it. I, instead, I need a dynamic light, a, a light that follows the box and that is fixed to the box about two, two and a half centimeters from the glass up here. And I will, I will make this from some aluminum profiles and LED strips that have these very high CRI LEDs. Let's get going. Right now there is still a bit of support in here, so let's uh, remove that. Let's first drill these four holes with a four millimeter drill. And then a 5mm drill for these four holes. And finally an 8mm to drill this hole that is angled. And I want to sink these four holes on the back. Let's see if the screws fit. Yep. Oh great, look! This part actually fits snugly on top of this piece of beach. So this is a really sturdy surface to bash on. I think that's in. Good. Two bearings in. Let's continue. Last but not least, I want to put in the new, the old pulley and its bolt. Okay. I have again laid the machine on its back and now I need to disassemble this while it's in place. Yes, one side went off really easily. So, it's out. Let's put this in. First thing is putting the belt in here. And some WD-40 will certainly help. Okay. 
Great, it's coming through the other end now. Okay, the last step is to put on this lock nut, lock, locking ring. That's it. And because I haven't changed the geometry of this part, I just changed this little part, I can reuse the old screw holes. Great! And now these four screws remain. And now the pulley goes back on. First the washer, then the pulley, then another washer, and then the lock nut. Great! And now I can put this thing back up. So hopefully this doesn't break now. Looks good! I think version 3 of that part up here finally works. So I will keep that and update the plants. Let's continue making the light. The light has to go up here on top of the glass, providing some light through the glass. This is important because these two glass panes, this one and this one, the surface can be imagined to act a bit like a mirror. And two mirrors positioned like this actually form a so-called retro-reflective mirror, one that sends the beam back in the same direction where it came from. So a beam that would come in from the top, vertically like this down, would hit this mirror and would then continue horizontally over to the other edge and would then go up again out of the glass. And one can now calculate that with many different angles. And I think if I position the light, and I might have been mistaken here, but the theory goes that if um, I put the light about two and a half centimeters up here, then all the, all the direct reflections of the light would go into infinity out of the box and none would hit the camera. And that's the big thing. I don't want any reflections on, this, uh, on the glass in the camera or on the picture. So let's, let's make a light that goes on top of this glass, it's light and sturdy and provides great illumination and fits on top of here. Let's go! These parts will eventually become the light holder, the, the thing that holds the LED strips. It consists of two parts, this part and that part, and that twice. One for the front and one for the back. Together with an aluminum profile like this, this is 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter aluminum profile, and some other parts. This makes up the light holder. These parts are 3D printed, and as it is with all 3D printed parts, the ho I prefer to drill open the holes a bit to their perfect dimension because usually they come out a tiny bit too small and not perfectly even on the inside. These parts have a 3 millimeter hole in the middle. These parts are a bit more awkward to drill because I can't put them on like this because they have a 45 degree angle here. So I'll just freehand this and don't do this at home. From this aluminum profile, which is 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters, I need a 316 millimeter long piece. Let me show you how this goes together. And for this part I need two threaded inserts and four of the small M3 by 10 screws. Two of the M3 by 10 go in here and two go in these holes from the bottom. You can see they have a divot for the screw head. Okay, let's let's put in the M3 thread inserts. So one M3 by 10 through the bottom and then in the threaded insert in here. 
I couldn't be bothered to film the inserting or the threaded inserts. I did that many times already. So this goes on here. And these two parts are fixed in place with these two additional screws. Let's drill these. I used a 3mm drill to leave a small mark here and now I will drill a 2.5mm hole and tap an M3 thread in there. These parts receive these, what's it called, rubber feet? Suction cups? So I think they are called suction cups. The suction cups right now are easy to slip in and out, and certainly I don't want that. So I want to secure them with a small drop of hot glue. Let's clean this, and then let's glue on some LEDs. Let's glue this on. This is the light assembly that I just assembled. And now this has two stripes of LEDs, one here and one here. And one of those came already with the cable attached. I will extend this cable, but also these two stripes need to be connected. So I want to solder them together by adding a short length of cable from here to there. So let's do this. Okay, one side is on. And now, to relieve stress from the strips, I will put one zip tie around this. And now this cable needs to be extended a bit. And last, one more zip tie. This unit is ready to be mounted, but I think we could test it beforehand as well. On these two clamps, I now have 12 volt hooked up and a lab power supply unit that can limit the amps. And right now I have zero amps. Yes, and I, oh yeah, some, some light is there. Nice. Pretty damn bright. And they draw 0 0.82 amps at 12 volt. They are really, really bright. Let's see if the light fits. So it goes centered on here. Yep, like that. I think that looks rather nice and tidy. Let's put this cable orderly away. Right now that I'm putting this cable here, I've been thinking, maybe I should just, just include a cable holder into this part. And now, I want to replace this old cable, which is a 230 volt cable that I've never used and just put there for another idea how to do the light. Now I need to replace that with this cable that I just put in there. 
And for that, I need to open the electronics compartment and pull it through. Let's do another one of these very popular time lapses of me opening this thing. Yeah, this cable is labeled light. Well, now I'll open this dungeon box and see where these cables end up. Let's pull them out. Okay, and I can put the junction box back together. So what's what? This is the cable I want to take out. Like both ends of it, one here, one there. And this is the cable which I want to put in. And my idea is, maybe I just tape these two cables together and then pull them through. Let's see if that works. Let's see, here goes nothing. Yes, I love it when I, oh fuck. And I am a bloody idiot, now I have a loop up here. I'm an idiot, officially, but I can fix this without putting the cable through again. If I just take this off, Okay, this way, and now I'll put this back on. And now I can pull this through further. And the new cable is in, and I'll wire it in another day, in some future episode. So let's close this thing back up. Earlier I said I finished the counterweight, but I just found an arrow. Look at this. This thing doesn't go completely up, the counterweight touches the bottom. Hmm. I can lift it up further to this position where it's supposed to go in its upper position. But it the counterweight touches the ground about two centimeters early. So that means that I just have to change the length of this rope and make it about three centimeters shorter. Let's do this. So I decided to put the machine on its side to make this adjustment. Okay, let's see. Yep, that's maximum height. And the counterweight is not touching the bottom. Lowest position, and there's still some room left up here. Great, that works now. Thanks for watching. This was just one part of a longer series where I show all the steps how to make this page turning open source book scanner yourself. I don't yet know what the next episode will be about, but I'm sure that it will be episode number 29. And I'm also sure that it will be released on a Thursday. I just don't know yet which Thursday and what will be in it. But you'll find out eventually. If you like to not miss this episode, then please consider to subscribe and maybe even hit the bell button if you like me to annoy you when I have something new ready. So, see ya then!